now we're going to dig into actually learning some C++. So traditionally in computers, the first program you ever write is called Hello World. I don't know where they came from, but it's been around forever. So our first program will look like this. We've got an include statement. Well, first we see these two slashes, uh, the green text. Those are called comments. And what you put on them is things to describe your program. It's a good habit to get into to put details of your program in there so people can understand what they do. I wouldn't go as crazy as I am in this example, but in general, you should comment because it helps make your code clearer to people who have to modify it in the future. So our program begins first with an include statement called for IO stream. And what that does is it brings in an outside library, which enables us to print things to screens or other devices. Then our program actually begins. This is called function main. It is where every C++ program starts running. Every program will have one. First thing we do in here is we come to our first line uh, where it says standard count, which we'll get into later. Hello world. And what that will say is to display the, uh, the words hello world on the screen. Return zero basically says when we're done, send a message back to the operating system saying we're done and we had a positive result. So now I'm going to take us under REPL IT and demo actually building that and running that program. So when we log under REPL IT and we go to the appropriate project, we will see something similar to this. Mine has a little bit extra stuff on it because it's an instructor view, but here we'll click on the, the program we've created, main.cpp, and here we have pretty much what we showed in the last example. We include the IO stream, uh, have int main, and then in here we actually output things. Now to be a little bit better programmers, we're going to put some comments in. Um, so we are going to build, this is going to be a hello world path. And this will display hello world. On the console. So now, if you were in Linux, what you could do here is say um, g++ main.cpp and it'll go off and tinker around, although it is going rather slowly and it's done, and it creates a.out, which is the default name for any file name when you build it. So now we can say a.out to actually run it. And there we go, hello world. Now, there's an easier way to do it in REPL. Just hit run. And when it's done compiling, it will actually run. Now, the one thing to be aware of in REPL is to use the run button, your file has to be named main.cpp. Otherwise, it can't find it. So, with that in mind, that is our first program. And now we'll make some changes to it after we discuss a couple more things. So now we're going to go into greater detail, breaking down Hello World. So here's our first comment. This program prints Hello World. Um, the double slash indicates that the remainder of each line is a comment. You insert comments to document your program. And the comments are ignored by the C++ compiler. They don't generate any machine code or do anything. A comment beginning with double slash is called a single line comment because it terminates at the end of the line and goes back to regular code. You can also use slash star and a closing slash star to use comments across multiple lines. So now we look at our include IO stream. This is what's called a preprocessing directive. It's a message to the C++ preprocessor. Before the compiler runs, something called the preprocessor runs, which basically preps your program. Lines that begin with the pound sign are preprocessor directives and they're processed by the preprocessor before the program is compiled. So include IO stream notifies the preprocessor to include the contents of the input output header file. A header file is a file containing descriptive information about code used in different parts of the program. It helps encourage reuse. IO stream is a standard header file containing information used by the compiler when compiling any program that outputs data to the screen. You use blank lines, space characters, and tab characters, i.e. tabbed, to make programs easier to read. Together, these characters are known as white space. 
white space is also stripped out by the compiler. Formatting often differs from program to program, programmer to programmer. When programming with others, you should agree on a style ahead of time and stick to it. Otherwise, you're going to end up having literal holy wars. Every C++ program begins with the main function. The parentheses after main indicate that main is a function, and C++ programs typically consist of one or more functions and what are called classes, which we'll come back to later. Exactly one function in every program must be named main. If you have more than one main, you'll get an error. C++ programs begin executing at main, even if main is not the first function defined in the program file. Okay, it finds main and starts from there. The keyword int to the left of main indicates that the main returns an integer. A keyword is a word in the code that is reserved by C++ for its use. For now, simply include the keyword int to the left of main. Uh, each of your programs. We'll explain more what it does later. A left brace must begin the body of every function. A corresponding right brace must end it. A statement instructs the computer to perform an action. Together, the quotation marks and the characters between them are called a string, a character string, or a string literal. We refer to st characters between double quotes simply as strings. When you have a string, the compiler leaves it alone. It won't strip out the white space. Almost every C++ statement ends with a semicolon unless it ends with a left or right, a right brace. Or it's an include statement or a preprocessor statement. So, input and output in C++ are accomplished with what are called streams of data. Think of those as a buffer that gets pushed out onto the screen. Uh, just a, a page of information that gets pushed out onto the screen. When a C out statement executes, it sends a stream of characters to the standard output. That standard output is called C out. We put std colon colon in front of it because that is a namespace. What that means is across programs, we could have multiple things named C out that are different things. Using a namespace identifies a function. And it identifies it associated with the include that brings it in. Um, std count specifies that we are using a name, in this case, C out that belongs to the standard namespace. The names C in, the standard input, and C error also belong to the namespace standard. Um, C error is the error stream when things go bad. In the context of an output statement, the double less than sign is referred to as the insertion operator. It inserts things into the output stream, which in our case will be a screen. Later, you can use files. The value to the operator's right, which is called the right operand, is inserted in the output stream. Slash n is not printed. It's a special character called an escape character, indicating the backslash character that has a special thing that it does. When a backslash is encountered, the next character is combined with the backslash to form an escape sequence. The escape sequence slash n means new line, as in return, and it causes the cursor to move to the beginning of the next line. Here are some really common ones. We've got new line, which positions at the end of the next line. We've got tab, indicated by slash t, which puts a tab in there. Slash r is a carriage return. It pushes this into the screen to the beginning of the current line, and it doesn't advance the next cursor. An alert sounds a system bell. Double backslash is how you print the backslash character. To do a single quote, you use slash single quote, and to do a double quote, you use slash double quote. When the return statement is used at the end of main, the value zero indicates that the program has terminated successfully. According to the C++ standard, if a program execution reaches the end of main without encountering a return statement, it's assumed the program is correct, um, and the return can often be omitted. So, Hello World can be printed in several ways. We could take our first program, and instead of doing it on one line, we could do it on two. We do a standard C out hello, but no return. Standard C out world with a return, although I did forget the slash on here, and it'll pr pr predict, it'll print slash hello world. A single statement can also print multiple lines by using new line characters. Each time the new line 
character has encountered, the output stream positions the cursor at the next line. To get a break line, you put two of them back to back. So, to modify our program again, we say standard out or C out, hello, slash n, world, slash n, slash n, exclamation point, slash n, would print hello on one line, followed by the comma, world on the next, two blank lines, and then the exclamation point. So, now we're going to move on to something a little bit more intricate. The next program attains two integers typed by a user at the keyboard and computes their sum and outputs the result using the standard out. So here's our basic program. First, we declare, we have our int main, starter program. We declare and initialize our variables where we want to store our data. So we're going to have number one. We're going to set its initial value to zero, and we're going to say it's an integer. Number two also will set its value to zero and say it's an integer. And finally, sum will set its value to zero and also say it's an integer. Then we're going to print the words enter first integer. Then we're going to wait for the user to type in an integer and hit return. That's what the standard CN does. Secondly, we're going to repeat this for the second integer. So now in our number one, we're going to have the first value we enter. In the number two, we'll have the second value we enter. So then what we're going to do is compute the sum by adding number one and number two. And then we're going to print out the words sum is, and then the value sum. Notice how we chain these together. And then std endl. And what endl is, is a nice clean way to uh, do a slash n. So if we run our program, we'll say enter first integer, enter second integer, and the sum is 117. So let's go into a little more detail there. Declarations introduce identifiers in the programs. The identifiers number one, number two, and sum are the name of variables. A variable represents a location in memory where a value can be stored for use by a program. Variable number one and number two and sum are of data type int, meaning these variables will hold integers. They can only hold integers. You can't put words in them, for example. So lines 8 to 10 of the example, we initialize each variable to 0 by placing a, a value in braces, and it has to follow the variable name. That's known as list initialization. It's a new feature introduced in C, C++ 11. Previously, you would just do an assignment statement equals 0. Um, you can do either one. The other one's a little bit shorter. Every variable must be declared with a name and a data type. C++ is a strongly typed language, which means it requires it, that it knows the type of every variable. If you don't declare it before you use it, you will get an error. If more than one name is declared in a declaration, the names are, can be separated by commas. This is referred to as a comma-separated list. So you can say int x, comma, int y, and so forth. So for floating point numbers or real numbers, you use the data type double. For characters, you use the data type of char. Real numbers are numbers with decimal points such as 3.4, negative uh, 11.19, etc. A char may only hold a single lowercase character, a single uppercase letter, a single digit, or a special character. Int, double, and char are called fundamental types. Fundamental types are keywords and must appear all in lowercase, and you can't use them for anything else. The book, Appendix C, contains the complete list of fundamental types. A variable name is any valid identifier that is not a keyword. A valid identifier is a series of characters, digits, and underscores that does not begin with a digit. So it has to begin with a letter or an underscore. C++ is case sensitive. Uppercase and lowercase are different. So A1 lowercase and A1 uppercase are different identifiers. That's a common but. Declarations of variables can be placed anywhere in the program, but they have to be placed before they're used. So uh, one of the things we use is a prompt to in our code. It directs the user to take specific action. CN statement uses the input stream object uh, of namespace standard and the stream extraction operator to obtain a value from the keyboard. Using the stream extraction operator with CN takes character input from the standard input, which is usually the keyboard, but it could be a file. 
When the computer executes an input statement that places a value in an int, it waits for the user to enter a value for variable 1. The user responds by typing in the number and hitting enter. The computer converts the character representation of the number to an integer, uh, the key 1 and 2, for example, into 12, and assigns it, meaning it copies it, to the variable number 1. Any subsequent references to number 1 will use that value, 12, that you've entered. Pressing enter also causes the cursor to move to the next line. An assignment statement, in our example, adds the values of variable number 1 and number 2 and assigns the results to variable sum using the assignment operator. Most calculations are performed in assignment statements. Equal operator and plus operator are called binary operators because each one has two operands, a left side and a right side. Endo is what's called a stream manipulator. It's an abbreviation for end line and belongs to the namespace standard. The standard endo stream, stream manipulator outputs a new line then flushes the output buffer. On some systems, outputs are accumulated in the machine until there are enough to make it worthwhile to print. And endo will actually flush the buffer and force them all out when you use it. This is important for prompts because otherwise they won't show up until after they're done. You can use multiple stream insertion operators in a single statement, and it's referred to concatenation, chaining, or cascading stream operations. Calculations can also be performed in output statements. So we're going to do another demo where we're going to do some changes to Hello World to make it do some other stuff. So we're going to make some changes to Hello World. First of all, we will now we're going to introduce a variable, number 1, like we said, and we're going to set up the value 0. Introduce another one, number 2, set it to 0. Introduce sum, and set it to 0. Then what we'll do is, whoops, typo there. We will then... Now, some C++ programmers like to put the, the squiggly on the same line. I prefer to put it on its own line. Uh, that is a matter of preference or coding standard. So we've got this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say first integer. Okay, notice we don't put a return here because we want it to appear on the same line. And then we'll say in and we'll read it in number one. Notice that this, the arrows go the opposite way. It's greater than size because we want to, you know, have, look, visualize it coming in. So then we're going to repeat these, but for number two, <coughs> two. And then now that we have these stored in our variables, we're going to add them. Okay. And then we're going to output, output the sum. So here we'll say, sum equals and another insertion operator and then another insertion operator and then and there we go so now our program should work so if we go ahead and run it it'll compile for a second and I have a typo um, my typo is that I forgot the double colon And now, let's run it again. This time it works. So we'll say 5 and 12, and it should print out 17. So our program works. Now, some other changes we could make is we can assign variables direct values directly to variables, too. Like here, we can say int x equals 5 instead of setting it to 0. Or we can say int y equals 5. It's the same thing, just a different way of doing it. Um, I use X, yeah, I can use X, but hit this shown error because it's a duplicate now. You can use a variable over again, but you can't redefine it. So the int should only appear one time in your program per variable in each section. You can use the variable multiple times, but you don't often do that. Now let's talk a little bit about memory. Variable names such as number one, number two, and sum correspond to locations in the computer's memory. Every variable has a name, a type, and a size, and a value. 
When a value is placed in a memory location, the value overwrites the previous value, thus placing a new value into a memory location as said to be destructive. When you read it out, it's non-destructive. One thing to keep in mind, if you don't initialize a variable, its, vari its value will be random and garbage, and that's a fun thing to debug. So here's some examples. Our number one is a memory location, and we've had the value 45 in it. Okay, now here we have number one and number two having different values, 45 and 72. And then after we do our assignment, we uh, on addition, we have numbers 117, which is the sum of the two, and so we now have the third variable. So, given that, let's talk a little bit about arithmetic. Most programs perform some arithmetic. C++ arithmetic operations are summarized. There's the star, which is multiplication, the percent sign, which is the remainder or modulus operation, uh, and it can only be used with integers. There's no real way to use a remainder with floating point or decimal number. The arithmetic operators are all binary operators. There are some unary ones that we'll come to later. Integer division, where both numbers are integers, yields an integer quotient. Any fractional part in integer division is discarded or truncated. Now remember, you can't divide by zero. That'll cause an error. So here are common addition and subtraction operators. We've got plus minus, multiply, divide, and remainder or mod. And here are the algebraic equivalents and what they look like, and here's the actual C++ expressions. Expressions such as A divided by B must be written as A slash B so that all constants and variables appear in a straight line. You use parentheses just like you do in math to give something a higher priority. For if we wanted to say a times B plus C, and we write it like this, B plus C will be executed first. The sequence the operators are provided with are basically the equivalent of what is called PEMDAS. Parentheses, exponent, well, there's no exponents in C, uh, multiplication, division, remainders, and then addition and subtraction. There's no arithmetic operator for exponentation. There's a function for it, but x squared is, is represented as x times x. So what's next is the, it will show how we evaluate a polynomial. 2 times 5 times 5 plus 3 times 5 plus 7. Well, 2 times 5 is 10. That would get our app, um, done first. Then the times 5 would be 50. That would be done next. Then the 3 times 5 would be done. So we're down to that. And then we could add them all together. So now we're going to go on and talk about decision making. The if statement is a statement in C++ that allows a program to take alternative action based on whether a condition is true or false. If x equals 5, do this, otherwise do that. If the condition is true, the statement in the body of the if statement is executed. If the condition is false, it's not executed. There is also an else clause. Conditions and if statements can be formed by using equality operators and relational operators. The relational operators all have the same level of precedence and associate left to right. Equality operators both have the same level of precedence, which is lower than that of the relation operators, and also associate left to right. An if statement allows the program to choose between two alternatives. If this is true, do this. If otherwise, do that. That's called an if-else. You can also just have an is. If this is true, do this. Otherwise, just keep going. So here are some relational operators. Greater than or equal. Greater than, which is you know, just the greater than sign. Less than. Greater than or equal to in math is written like this, but in C++ is written greater than followed by the equal sign. Then there's the equality operator. To see if two things are the same, you use double equals, not equals, and exclamation point equals for not equals. So the example below uses six statements uh, to compare two numbers input by the user. If the condition in any of these statements is satisfied, the output statement with that if statement executes. So here's an example. Now, we're using something called a using statement here, and that lets us use count without saying std all the time. So here's our first number we, in we input, and then our second one, and Notice here that we input two numbers right in one line. 
you um, then go on. If number one equals number two, if they're the same, then output number one equals number two. If number one doesn't equal number two, output that they're not equal. If it's less than, we're going to output less than. If it's greater than, we're going to output it's greater than, and so forth. Basically, the computer will go each line by line, and only if it's true will it do the things inside the brackets. So, enter two integers to compare, 3 and 7. It'll tell us that 3 doesn't equal 7. 3 is less than 7. 3 is less than or equal to 7. Similarly, 22 and 12 will get us these results. So, we can use the declaration as shown to eliminate the need to repeat the standard prefix. We can write count instead of C out instead of standard C out, C in instead of standard C in, and it makes your programs a little easier to read. You don't have to do this, but it's cleaner. Um, to going forward, we're going to use this notation because it's simpler. So, um, here is the precedence of all the operators in one place. We've got our parentheses. We've got, you know, uh, starting at top and going down to the relational operators, less than or equal, etc. And then uh, equality and assignment has the lowest precedence. So basically, that covers our introduction to the rudiments of programming. So what we've learned so far is how to create a very, create a program, do an include to get our input output functions create our main method or function, declare some variables, uh, initialize variables, add two values and store them in variables, do some basic input, and do some basic output. So you've learned quite a bit. Now would be a good time to go on to REPL and practice a little bit.